Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am the Grand Cat and welcome to another Grand Cat unboxing. Today we are looking at this battle figure multi-pack which is very very cool. It is 10 figures all together all for the price of one. Now this is an expensive little set. It's not easy to get a hold of but as far as I'm aware I think this is the only way to get the battle figure version of Garchomp so far. So let's see exactly what we've got in the pack i will be pointing out here. We of course have your Eevee, the Garchomp, which is the, the main reason to buy this, I, I would say. Yeah, but this, this is actually a really strong set, it's really good. There isn't a lot of weaker Pokemon, you know, ones that aren't um, quite as popular. And you've got a Score Bunny, which of course is very, very, like, the most popular um, starter of that generation. You've got the three original starters, all doing the winking uh, face. You've got Bulbasaur, Squirtle and Charmander. Of course, you've always got the mascot Pikachu in there. We have Wooloo, who is a lovely little fan favourite. Um, we have Relu, who of course evolves into Lucario, and Lucario is very, very um, highly up there. And we have a Cubone, which is a lovely little creature who evolves into a Marowak. And let's take a look at the back of this. I know that you can't really see the top of it, but let's just show you what the top of it looks like there, because it was not fitting on camera. There you go, it just says Pokemon has Pikachu at the top of it and this here is the the battle pack back of it so there you can see uh, we have a Glaceon, we have a Boltund, Leafeon etc so on and so forth I won't bother reading them out you can see them all for yourself but there we go and of course from the battle set the battle figure packs these are all supposed to be made to scale with the rest of the figures in the line of course they're not always to scale because some Pokemon are obscene and how gigantic and how massive they are but even in the games they aren't truly to scale and um, you have some creatures that are a lot bigger than what you would expect them to be uh, in particular some of the birds that are well above six foot tall <laughs> which is crazy and you're like oh hmm did not expect that because even the games don't make it out that uh, they are that size. And here we go, this is what it looks like out of the set. I'm going to put that over to the side. I'm going to just make sure that none of these fall out. It's a very lovely looking set. I mean, this is... It, what it's meant to be is it's supposed to be sort of like a starter set. You know, so that you can, you know, give this as a gift box to someone. And then they've got a whole bunch of Pokemon to start themselves off on their little collection. So it's really cool for what they've done with everything that they've got going for it. And like I said, I think this is the only way to get Garchomp so far. And also, this is a female Garchomp. You can tell because it doesn't have the little niche in its dorsal fin. So the reason I bought this was because I was trying to get a figure set of uh, all, of my all of my Pokemon that I run in my Pokemon team in Pokemon Violet. And Garchomp is one of them. Um, Lucario is another one, which we've got over there. I'm also using a Gyarados, who I have called Kaido. And a lot of them are brand new Pokemon that don't have a figure release yet. So I can't really complete the set yet, but I can get some of my old favourites at least. So here we go. There is our lovely, lovely Willow. Look at him. This is something I really love about Pokemon. Um, you never really get a bad Pokemon figure. Like, uh, anything Nintendo related, it generally tends to be pretty high, pretty good quality. And look at the face on that Willow. And this this is just a ball of... <laughs> of sheep. Um, there is obviously no articulation in it whatsoever. I think he's got a little bit of a scuff there. Just behind the ear. He's got his lovely little horns at the top. Those aren't scuffs. And look at those little feet. <laughs> that is fantastic. Ah, yes, I I do quite enjoy that willow. That willow. Um, next up, uh, let's take a look at the top one up here. This one is Rillo. Okay, we're not going to take a look at him. We're going to look at some of the easier ones that come up first. So let us get out um, a Pikachu. He's also in refusal. I think, right, if we take the back of this off. So once again, the same with Pokemon. The inside of the box is all Pokeballs, as you can see, like so. 
Uh, we also have a little leaflet here, so let's take a quick look at that before we do anything else. Okay, I'll open this up in front of you guys, on camera. And there we go, they're scaled for battle, is their big thing. Um, they like to show off. So if this would focus a little bit, there we go. So there you can see some of the other figures that are in the line. You've got a little checklist, so you've got a little square next to them that you can tick off to say what ones you've got and what ones you don't. So that's a cool little additional thing that they've got in there. It's also a pretty good uh, marketing gimmick because it fits in with the whole, you know, gotta catch them all, <laughs> except this is gotta buy them all. It's very, very different. Uh, so let's take a look at Rilla if we can. So I'm trying to be careful here because I don't want to put a lot of force into pushing one out and then they all fall out. And Rilla's really stuck in there. So let's try Cubone's instead. Well, I'll give it to them in terms of packaging. They, uh, they're they definitely a lot more in the packaging than what I expected. I was worried that they would all fall out if I turned it around, but uh, no, not the case at all. Uh, so here is Cubone. Uh, if you would focus please, camera. Sometimes it just takes a second. Sometimes it's a bit longer than a second. It's getting there. There we go. So Cubone, he doesn't have any articulation, his head is stuck to the side, but that is a typical Cubone pose. Of course, he's got the skull on him, which if you know, you know, if you don't, then I'm not going to say it. Um, but he's also holding his little um, bonerang, <laughs> I think that is the official name of it. Um, and there is the rumour of, well, there was the rumour back in ye old days, that a Cubone was actually a Charmander that evolved through a different method and lost the fire in its tail. And it does look a little bit like a Charmander, if you look at it. Of course it doesn't evolve into a Charizard or a Charmeleon, but instead into a Marowak, because it fuses with the bone in its head. So, there's a little bit of cool information, although it's not actual information, it is rumour, in theory. But, it is theory that's believed by quite a lot of people. So, <laughs> that's, well, I don't know if that makes it any, any better or not. Sometimes, um, sometimes it is better not to believe in the things that everyone else does. That is entirely up to you. So, let's take a look at Squirtle. Of course, very famous for founding the Squirtle Squad. Um, back in the day. And there he is, of course. All of the Gen 1 starters are doing this little winky face where they've got one eye closed and one eye open, which makes for some cool shots because you can have them all sitting there with, the mouth, with their eyes closed, half like that. Or you can have them all with their eyes open. And of course he's in a sitting happy position. Of course, no articulation on that one either. So, let's move on to the next one. Uh, let's try for Charmander. Let's try him. Here we go, nice and easy. Charmander, of course, uh, a favourite. Uh, also, um, when I started playing Pokemon, I, I got into it a little bit later than what the other kids did, and I started with Pokemon Yellow. And in Pokemon Yellow, you of course start with Pikachu, but you do have the ability to get the starters, and uh, Charmander was one of my happy little favourites. So, it is always nice to see a Charmander. It reminds me of my youth um, from 8,000 years ago. <laughs> I am an ancient grand cat. You don't become grand uh, by being young. <laughs> it takes age and wisdom. Uh, next up, we have one of the newer starters, Score Bunny. Um, now, weirdly, I've not actually... Uh, I, I didn't play the game that Scorbunny came in. That was the one that was based in the UK. Um, and he turns into a football bunny by the end of it, I'm pretty sure. By his final evolution. Um, but yeah, he's very, very cool, very, very happy. 
Um, yeah, I, I don't know what more to say. It's very, very nice. Now, does he stand? Because this looks like the kind of figure that... Oh. Well, actually, he, he stands perfectly. <laughs> I was about to say, this looks like the kind of figure that just will not want to stand. But no, he's he has no problems with balance. Oh my goodness, there we go. There. After praising it so much... Okay, no, <laughs> he, he's still fine. Um, next up, let's go for Eevee. Now, Eevee is very, very special to me because if any of you have seen the rest of my Pokemon videos, my unboxing videos, you will know that I have an entire Eevee collection and the only one that I didn't have was Eevee itself. Um, so from the Battle Collection, I managed to collect all of the... Um, there he is. I managed to collect all of the evolutions, but did not get an Eevee. And there he is. Look at that happy little Eevee. I wonder if these are all supposed to be representative... Well, they're not all representative stars. I mean, Wulu and <laughs> uh, Cubone aren't, certainly. But uh, you do have Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu. So I wonder if that's what they're going there. Um, no articulation on him. And he is a little bit smaller than... Oh, he's got a little pause on him. At the bottom. Uh, he is a little bit smaller than his evolutions, which he is meant to be because those are all supposed to be significantly larger. Um, double, I think, is almost the size. Uh, next up, uh, let's see if we can't get Bulbasaur out of there. Um, Bulbasaur, sadly, the least favourite of the original starters. Uh, I mean, if you love him, if he is your one, then, you know, well done for choosing the lesser popular of the three ones that you can get at the start. But uh, everyone I knew either went for a Blastoise or a Charmander. Um, and the only time that you saw a Bulbasaur was people that had completed the game once and or like someone that had two games and swapped starters between them. Um, he is really in there. He does not want to come out. He has heard me saying uh, that he's not popular, and that is not true, Bulbasaur. I thought you were always kind of cool. And with that, we have managed to coax him out of his cage. And Score Bunny has indeed fallen over. So, there we are. And there is our lovely little third starter. Bulbasaur himself. Look at that happy little dinosaur with a bulb growing on his back. He is absolutely lovely. <laughs> he, he reminds me of, you know, like some kind of dog. Um, there's, you know, those short little husky dogs, you know, that are pretty well built, that look like this, you know, that um, they're, they're just happy, they just have a big happy mouth on them, and there's only want to be petted all the time. That's what that Bulbasaur reminds me of. Okay, so we don't have many left to go. We have big old Pikachu, and we have our uh, Rilu. Uh, so let's try for Rilu first, because I want to save Garchomp for the end, if possible. So we're going to have to use the strength of at least three cats. Pull Rillo out of here. And there we are. There we are. Um, I was quite surprised at how early I found a Rillo in Pokemon Violet. And I was like, oh my goodness, well, that is absolutely going in my team. <laughs> that was exactly how I felt once I found Rillo. Why is he still out of focus? There we go. That is a little bit better. And there you can see he's got his happy little bandido mask on him. Uh, he's in his little fighting pose. He doesn't move from his fighting pose. He has no articulation whatsoever. His tail is also positioned in such a way to use to balance him. Also, he's got this little paws on the bottom of his feet. You can see the little three dots on his little toes as well. That is the kind of um, attention to detail that I love from Pokemon. And even though he's got his tail to balance, he does not want to stand... Um, he's very, very in refusal. He wants to lean forward. I think we're just going to have to let him lean on Charmander there. Oh my goodness, we're out of focus. So, let's go for Pikachu next. Uh, this is an angry looking Pikachu who is raising his fist to the sky. 
Um, I think it is almost by law that uh, every Pokemon set that has a whole bunch of Pokemon in it has to have a Pikachu in there somewhere because he is, of course, the mascot. There he is. He is doing his little punching salute. He is one ear down and he looks like he is not particularly happy. It is an unhappy Pikachu in amongst a lot of happy Pokemon. And now it is time for the main event, of course. Uh, you can see that the sun is starting to become harsh in the background, so I'm going to try and speed this up a little bit. Uh, it is early morning here in Scotland while I'm doing this review. I think it is around 6am. Oh, well, he seems to have some sort of feature on him because that arm is real loose. Um, I don't think I broke it. It does have... Oh, no, that's just a really loose arm because this is for the tail. Now, that is a pretty cool feature that the tail can swing back and forth. Um, but yeah, that is a really loose arm, as you can see. Hmm, a bit crazy, but it is no problem. Uh, so, he also has a bit of... Oh, no, I was about to say that he's got a bit of a paint defect on the underarms, but I think that's actually designed to go with the sort of diamond shape of the chest there. Uh, the mouth doesn't move, but the head has a little bit of rotation. Uh, the arms on the swivel, there is no elbow manipulation and the legs do move back and forth like so. But yeah, there we go. It is very cool to see that you can have your Garchomp and you can have his little tail swishing back and forth. That's actually, it's a really good uh, look for the tail. Um, <laughs> they've obviously put attention to detail onto that. Um, loose arm, a little bit disappointing, but it isn't going to stop you from posing him into however you want him posed. And there we go. Um, oh, I that was, that was my fault, that isn't his fault. I moved the legs and he's now not in a happy standing position. Hmm. Let me just try this just off camera for just a second. Um, there we go. He's just a little bit pernickety in how, you, how he wants to stand. But yeah, very, very cool indeed. So last thing I'm going to do, um, that was out of the way, I didn't realize that was in the corner of the entire thing, is we're going to put them on this little stand over here, and then we're going to finish up the video. So let me just move these guys just over to the side for just a second. We'll move them all right back on. So we'll have the gold Garchomp in the center. We'll put the three evolutions all together. Uh, we'll have Pikachu over here, of course, as well. Uh, we'll have Eevee on the other side, since he was also technically a starter. And let's go Eevee. Uh, next up, a little Wooloo in the back here. Rillo is going to be in refusal to stand, so I'm going to position him next to the tail. I'm going to put a Cubone over here. And last but not least is Scorbunny, who is going to just sit right there. Perfect. And there we go. There is our carousel of our lovely Pokemon that you get in this little 10 piece thing. Um, so, very, very quick size comparison. Uh, here is the battle figure for Umbreon, and you can see that Umbreon is quite a little bit larger than all the little basic Pokemon they get here, but he is certainly smaller than what Garchomp is. So you can see that Garchomp is a big boy, and 
the others have been designed to be a little bit smaller as they should be but that is going to be it for this little video folks i really hope you all enjoyed if you did enjoy it well first of all i think we've got a playlist for pokemon um although we might not <laughs> i think we do uh, so you can check that out by clicking on my name, Grand Cat, below and see the other ones there. But you can also click on the playlist for the unboxing videos. You can see all the unboxings of all the various different figures and all the other sorts that I have unboxed over my time here on YouTube. And of course on the rest of the channel we do a lot of card games, do a lot of computer games, do a whole bunch of other things. So if that is of interest to you, by all means be sure to check them out. But if they're not, Please, say, please click that subscribe button because you do get to see when these cool little unboxing videos go up. But that is going to be it for this video folks, I really hope you all enjoyed and we'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye everybody.